This multi-million pound simulation suite is crucial in the development of the next generation aircraft carrier and its aircraft, the F-35 Lightning II. At its heart, this flight simulator. Peter Wilson, BAE Systems test pilot, is showing me how it works. We're doing what's known as a ship-borne rolling vertical landing. Different from the Harrier, the landing involves some forward movement. And that's because, although the F-35 is capable of a true jump jet-style landing, when fully loaded, it needs a small amount of lift from the wings, hence the 64 knots of speed that we maintain as we land. Close to touchdown, I get flashing lights, we're down, the throttle will go to idle, I jump on the tow brakes, and we stop the airplane. Guiding us is a head-up display. And even for a complete novice like me, it's very understandable, even straightforward. And that's what we're trying to do with F-35 all over the place, is make the airplane super easy to fly, so that the guys in the cockpit can focus on what they really need to be worrying about, which is the, the war. Peter says with 20 minutes of practice, I'll be able to land on my own. Now just hold everything until touchdown and get on the brakes. Bit of right, bit of right correction. Oh, that's nice left, sorry. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm too heavy with my feet there, aren't I? <laughs> After a couple of practice runs, Peter retreats to a headset. The hydraulic rams are raised, and I'm doing it for real. The hydraulics really add to the sensation, and despite my complete lack of natural ability, I do land it sort of OK, yeah, pulling to a complete back. stop in just 200 feet. And we've stopped. <laughs> that was awesome. Good job. Now, you might think this is all about flight training pilots, but it's not. This simulator is actually an engineering tool, getting both the F-35 and the carrier bang on, solving design conflicts before they arise. In a simulation environment, we can operate the aircraft off the aircraft carrier years in advance of actually being able to do it in real life. So, uh, again, we can look at all the pros and cons, uh, look at any... Um, uh, issues and work our way around those. This shows where real progress has been made in what the final Queen Elizabeth class carrier will be like thanks to this simulator. Look at these aeroplanes lined up as they will be on the real carrier. They're at an angle now because this simulator has shown that's the best place for them to be. More room on the deck for the planes to land and that means during the build phase for the carrier everything can be built in the right place. If they'd only found this out after it had been built it would have cost millions to rectify. On the day of my visit, military personnel were spending time in the simulator. They represent the customer in this whole process. We are very much now looking at the ability to you know, bring back a much better, much less workload to the ship. And you know, between the two of them, what we're doing here will make it a lot easier for uh, overall delivery of, of the system. We're still years away from seeing a QE2 class carrier with its complement of F-35s in an operational stance. But with this continual extremely high level of simulation, hopes are high that it'll be a relatively smooth process getting them to that stage. Tim Cooper, Forces News, BAA Systems, Wharton.